This is a video I made on Darwin and Lady Hope. It is from the Untold Story by Lawrence Croft, who also wrote The Life and Death of Charles Darwin. I think it's important that we get this message out that Lady Hope was indeed a real person and then this encounter was not a hoax. So let's begin. The Lady Hope story. Who was this lady? How did she become such a controversial figure? Why was she so defamed and ridiculed? Why has secular history considered her a hoax and labeled her as a complete fabricator and fraud? Why is it so preposterous that a man like Charles Darwin would come to know Jesus as savior? Hmm. The Hope Hoax. She would be written off as a fraud, a fabricator, exaggerator, a compulsive liar, even a brilliant counterfeiter, calling her Hope's Hoax. Her description was given as a pious sentimenteer, bleeding heart, crazy water drinking, self-promoting temperance leader, even a man hater. For her to have such accusations in print, she must have done some pretty horrific things, do you think? Indeed, her name has been blackened without a single article of proof. Not one, not one piece of evidence. The proof of fraud is serious. It requires evidence, does it not? Well, maybe not if you're an evangelical Christian. It seems the world can say anything they want about Christians and calling us Jesus freaks, holy rollers, God squatters, Bible thumpers, holier than thou. Hmm, those are just some things. Um, that's why her story needs to be told. She was falsely accused and defamed because the accuser of the brethren did not want the truth to get out. That a beautiful sister in Christ, kindred spirit to you and I, lover of God, who brought the good news of the gospel, could be used in the darkest of places to be instrumental in the leading of one of the greatest philosophers of evil to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, How? what a testimony. Of course they would try to snuff that out, don't you think? Nip it in the bud, so to say. The investigation. The one thing they forget, God upholds his own. Any weapon formed against us will not prosper and all lies will be revealed. I went to investigate her story and wow, the truth is that none of the accusations have produced any evidence of her being dishonest at all. Her life was impeccably clean and amazing. She was an evangelist who led many to Jesus. The allegations were pur purely from prejudice against evangelical Christians. Hmm. The story, the testimony, Lady Hope's meeting with Darwin was a beautifully detailed and encouraging note. Certainly lovingly and honorable to Darwin. Her description of the man, not like the man you would think of him being, she seemed to be his friend and comfort him. And this description was a very honorable. We'll read this later, but let's go on. The reaction to her encounter. The Christian world was encouraged to know that even Darwin could have experienced the grace of God. Yes, even Darwin. But the secular world, who had clung to evolution as a springboard for other humanistic philosophy, would be up in arms to hear this testimony. Yeah, they would be pretty angry about this testimony. The first reaction, though, would have to come from the Darwin family. And indeed, it did. The Darwin family, well, they were wealthy Unitarians, agnostics, and atheists. They did not want the idea to be spread that their father could have had a change of heart before he died. Charles Darwin had been promoted as an unbeliever to the end, 
with the evolutionists. The family had edited his life story to take out any contrary ideas of this. 1922. Now this is a uh, prob. This is over uh, almost um, seven years, like ten years, maybe um, or so. Henrietta Darwin's eldest daughter. After after the the article came out, well, she vehemently denied the story, and she contacted the Christian magazine to pub so that they would publish the denial of Lady the Lady Hope story that was put that Lady Hope story on February 23rd, 1922. The story had already come out earlier, but she was just hearing it from this Christian magazine. She said, I was present at his death. Lady Hope was not present during his illness. He never recanted his views. This lady fabricated this in, this in the United States for Americans. There is no summer house. We don't even know a Lady Hope. Hmm. Was Henrietta right? Well, she indeed was um, Darwin's eldest daughter. Well, there were problems with what she said. She was not there six months before he died when Lady Hope allegedly was there. He did not live, she did not live at the Darwin home or even close to the Darwin home. She was married and busy with her family. But the biggest mistake was that she denied the summer house. Well, this summer house had already been described multiple times and later on even more times um, by Charles's granddaughter, Gwen. She, Gwen even described the chalk drawings of the summer house. And then even Henrietta recalled the children singing at the summer house and in her accounts, Lady Hope's details were identical. <laughs> Plus, she denied Lady Hope as one knowing her, but they didn't know her by another name. So Lady Hope's, uh, her account, her, her account that was published described the summer house just the way it was. Hmm, coincidence? I don't think so. And plus, of course, they didn't know her name as Lady Hope, an evangelical um, person, uh, basically evangelist, no, but they would know her by the name Elizabeth Cotton. Now Darwin's third son, Francis, and he tried to smother this account when it was first written in on August 21st, 1915. Like I said, it was earlier than Henrietta. He had edit, edited the life and letters of Charles Darwin. So he was making account of his dad's life. Well, when he found that, that she had been written um, in, in the Boston uh, Magazine, he wrote, Professor Robinson, Robertson there, um, who was in charge of that. And he said, neither I nor any members of my family have any knowledge of Lady Hope. It would have been impossible for her to visit my father. At the same time, Robertson received co-letters with his at, and to, from Toronto, Canada, informing him that they had personal knowledge of Lady Hope. Hmm, they did? that her imagination goes wild, that she was crazy. He could tell her a tale about her and testify that she indeed was a shameful fake. They called her a fake. Francis Darwin's accusations here. He said he didn't know her, hmm? but his coalition said they had personal knowledge of her. How did they know her then? Another letter came from Professor Poulton of Oxford's zoology. He was a dire, outspoken atheist and evolutionist, and he wanted to further blacken her name, and he tried. Suddenly, they were hurling accusations, saying they knew her as a fake, when in, actu when in actuality, they didn't even know her real name. Here's some pictures of Francis. You see, and down with Professor Poulton, and. <laughs> You got this weird uh, hand, secret hand sign, huh? Darwin's last surviving son was Leonard. 
So this was in 1934, so we're going forward in time. And um, Lady Hope's um, story was written in the Times. And so basically Darwin, re or Darwin's son Leonard reading this said, this account was a fictitious account of his father's deathbed conversion and that this had been imaginary. She had imagined. Sir Arthur Keith was the friends in, in, in coalition with Leonard. He lived in 1865 to 1955. He was of the Royal College of Surgeons and was involved with Leonard in sending this rebuttal. They got together to send this in. Uh, quote, Darwin has achieved victory by promoting atheism, social humanism, and evolution, dot, dot, dot. He is our consummate general. We are stocking his arsenal. The Darwin home is the Nazareth of evolution. Now we need to capture the final citadel and, and consolidate our position. That's how his position was. No matter what it took, they were going to consolidate their position on evolution. Nothing like this could come out to the public about Darwin being a Christian, right? He said, he is our consummate general. We need to defend Darwin. Now Darwin's been long gone, right? So Leonard, so Leonard um, followed whatever he, Sir Arthur Keith would tell him to do in, in putting through, forth this rebuttal. So in fact, when you look here, and it's right here with eugenics, so basically, um, uh, Leonard, he was head of the Eugenics Society. And that's pretty much an embarrassment now, don't you think? And it was based on Charles Darwin's theory of natural selections. Eugenics was founded on the belief that certain ethnic groups of humans had evolved to be genetically superior, saying certain human beings are superior than others and certain races are superior to others. And Leonard was like the president, he was like the president of the Eugenics Society. Leonard and Keith together, you can imagine those two. Leonard was made president of the Eugenics Society, as I have told, as evidence of his father's origin of the species and survival of the fittest. Now this is, this is a picture of Keith here. Leonard and Keith were the prime suspects in the fabrication of the missing link between apes and man called the Piltdown Forgery. Ha! Huh. You need to look up the Piltdown Forgery because basically what they did is they, they took a, a few little fossils they found of human and they con, uh, contrived, you know, this skull, saying this skull was the missing piece. And everybody said, yeah, we found the missing piece now. Yes, man has evolved from apes. And guess what? Later they found that they had filed down the teeth, they had contrived these bones, they had put together this skeleton the way they would, and it was a complete forgery called the Piltdown Forgery. Now it's an embarrassment to them. But guess who did this? Yes, Darwin's son, Leonard, and Keith. So, ha, huh, they were willing at all costs to lie. Um, in fact, um, Lady Hope would be easy for them to defame, right? They surely didn't want that coming out. And then there was Nora, Nora Barlow, granddaughter of Charles Darwin. She said later on, as we go through history, Lady Hope is a perpetual myth denied in 1922 by my family. So just forget about her. She is a hoax. Nora had published and deleted much of Darwin's comments about religion altogether so that they wouldn't even think that Darwin was religious. And this would be the last comment from the Darwin family. Neither Nora, Leonard, Francis, or Henrietta, the four of them, would, be, would present any hard evidence against Lady Hope at all. They had basically said that she didn't exist. Oh yes, but she most certainly did exist. And her name was not Lady Hope. It was Elizabeth Cotton. They didn't know this. So Pat Sloan, this guy, he's a humanist, not a Christian. 
But in 1960, this is a lot later, we're talking about 1960, um, he was with the Humanist Magazine. And he had worked with, in the Soviet Union and he saw the mistreatment of evangelical Christians under communism. So he saw how um, they, they were actually um, uh, lied about and, and persecuted. He saw the persecution. And so he decided to research the count of Lady Hope and Darwin. He reached, researched it um, just, just getting into just a, a bit of the research. As he, got, he, as he did, he, he, he wrote to the Atheist and Agnostic Society that despite all the Darwin family claims, he said, it is extremely likely that Lady Hope, an evangelical Christian, visited Charles Darwin. Elizabeth Cotton was her name, and she was a close friend of G James Fegan's mother, who was a close friend of Emma Darwin. The description she gave most certainly was the Darwin's home. Wow, this guy was not even a Christian, but he saw as he looked at this, what she wrote, that most definitely she was there, and he researched it. He did detective work, and he, and he was ex extremely suppressed, which means as he went forth and brought forth with a humanist magazine, they decided not to let this out, any of his research, because he had found that indeed Elizabeth Cotton was with Darwin towards the end of his life. Hmm, didn't hear that one, did we? The journal Nature then, in 1988, later on, decided to write something and published an article rejecting and ridiculing Lady Hope. The review given said, the evidence of this pious send is only one of a water drinking evangelist whom Darwin's daughter denied she ever even knew. So they published this again, again to defame Lady Hope. Wow, well, one thing about the water drinking evangelist Charles Darwin was involved in the temperance movement. He did not drink alcohol. In fact, he hated alcohol. He felt that alcohol killed his mother and his grandmother, so he had joined the temperance movement, possibly with Lady Hope. Hmm. Did they know her? Well, maybe not, but Charles and Emma did know Lady Hope. Here's a picture of Charles and Emma, and there's the Nature magazine. Professor James Moore. Now this is where James Moore, where they say she was totally a hoax, and then he does his investigation and everybody believes Professor James Moore. He wrote the Darwin legend in 1955, and everyone thought he knows everything about Darwin, so we need to believe him. He also, though, wrote another um, article, uh, Evangelicals and Science in the Historical Perspective, basically putting down any evangelicals um, and how they were against science. And so he was definitely biased against Christians, that's for sure. So far, there was not firm evidence against the Lady Hope story, he said. But now, mysteriously, some evidence appeared. And these evidence were called the Fegan letters. Well, who were they from? They were supposedly from a pastor, evangelist friend of Charles Darwin, who knew Lady Hope and allegedly he had defamed her character. So they took these letters, supposedly from um, this evangelist that Charles Darwin and Emma wrote about and knew about, um, and said that he had some letters and said that Lady Hope was basically a hoax and that Lady Hope would be defamed by a Christian evangelist. But we're gonna go in detail in next because this is, this is the firm evidence they said against Lady Hope. Um, and to prove that the hoax was not, Lady Hope was not the hoax, but the hoax was the Fegan letters. So I'm going to stop there. We're going to go on with the vegan letters.